the RTM Senior and Disabled Tax Relief Committee meeting. Um, it's a special meeting. Our normal meetings occur on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Um, but we had to reschedule from our last meeting, which we we had canceled due to a lack of quorum. So, yes, yeah. so I, I have the sent email and I did CC Betsy on it and I sent it to you and I said, here are the meeting minutes from May 25. And there were no changes on that. It was just um, okay. changes from the March 30th. So I'll forward this to you again right now. Okay. Yeah, we can't do the minutes because it's not on the agenda since it's a special meeting. But oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll discuss that at our regular meeting. I think it's going to be, I can't remember what the date would be this month. Okay, but there's the attachment to you. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to open. October 26th. 26. 26 would be the Thursday? It's oh, we're, we're on Wednesdays, aren't we? So October it would 26. be October 26th. Oh, yeah. Uh, and at six, our regular meetings are scheduled for 6.30. That is an issue I think that we should discuss going forward when we can, when it's on the agenda. Um, but I forgot to say, I was calling the meeting to order at 7.10. Uh, in attendance is Cindy Parham, uh, Hannah Gale, Jill Vergara, and Mark McDermott is uh, via WebEx. So let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. Okay, hang on one second, please, while I just go off in the dock. Start throw the agenda. Thank you, Hannah, for being here on your birthday. So my pleasure. <laughs> okay, so the meeting was called to order at 709, you said? 10. 710, yeah. So um, I wanted to talk about meeting a hardship exception or some kind of appeals process. And I think that what I sent around about that applicant who had been kicked out of the program, she reached out to me as someone who was serving on this committee. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's also kind of very random how people are able to find who can help them. Um, and that's unfortunate. It really needs to be spelled out in the ordinance, I think, who people should go to for problems because it's not the tax assessor. And most other programs that I've seen do have someone to go to, uh, whether it's the Board of Selectmen or some people even do it as a Board of Assessment Appeals issue. And that's how it seems like it's supposed, I think that we're supposed to have at least that protection and safeguard as mm -hmm. for people to be able to appeal to the Board of Assessment Appeals based on state statute. I think people sh are supposed to be given some kind of appeals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. procedures. So with that applicant, um, I, I have the understanding that her, so she applied for the program. She had all, she reapplied for the program. She had already been on the program and um, I think for several years. And when she reapplied her assets put, were, had pushed above the $650,000 asset limit. Um, but I thought she had told me that within the application period, she had found out that her assets actually mm -hmm. fell because of the market, because of the drop in the market. And she had called someone in the assessor's office to see whether she could resubmit that it was information. Before May 15th. Because it was before May 15th. Um, which doesn't make sense based on Ross's reply because he, he, he knows the applicant that we're talking about. And he said that she applied at the end of April mm -hmm. and he doesn't, he doesn't think that it happened within a two week okay. period because the end of the application period was May 13th. Oh, so, right, so it was the 15th was a Sunday. 
So uh, it, yeah, I'm going to go back and ask her. I'll call her and ask her just to make sure. But based on just that alone, he and the town attorney, if her as if she didn't realize that the assets were as did, low as they were, right? Um, before the application yeah. period ended, then she can't. She just can't reapply if she didn't. If she if she came after May fifteenth, right? Right. Um, and so I want to check to make sure if that's actually true. Um, I still think it's pretty rigid to, to right. do it that We're way. We have to look at her phone records if she called. Yeah. Unless she tells us exactly what day it was. So Ross has said that he had he really wants to fix this in the ordinance because mm -hmm. I I I pointed out that there's no specific date, right? Where the office is supposed to check assets. Um, so I thought that that was kind of like a loophole that she could maybe would help her to remain in the program. And they can make an exception, even though it's after July 1st. Right. But they said, no, so because she hasn't proven that she came in before May 15th. Yet. Right. Who said no, Ross? Ross did and, and the town attorney backed him up on that. Mm -hmm. It's good now that we actually have some kind of material change that we actually really need to make to the ordinance, because I think that that would help will help to persuade the board of finance to open a committee to. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at Ross's uh, uh, the email you sent Jill and that said that she did not reapply. By the cutoff date. Yeah, that's what he said. You speak with. Uh, the individual directly. I have to call her. I'll call her tomorrow and see. She's been waiting for a really long time to figure out what to do, and I feel very badly for her. Well, it's October, so yeah. Yeah. Do you know what exactly her benefit what was? Do. Just for exactly how much she was getting. Yeah. Um. No, I don't. Just wondering. Is there a uh... It's hard to lose money when you. Is there a way for her to apply for that? Uh, I'm gonna look it up here, but that ARPA money that was available. Oh. Let's see. Another thing that's not easy to find. Uh, if we're struggling to find it now. <laughs> the COVID recovery assistance. That's Five thousand per household. There were only 17 applications. This was through August and they only was $250,000 budgeted and they have a balance of 180,000. They only gave out 61,190, 61,190. Wow. Um, I mean, that's a question I have for a different, <laughs> different group yeah, of people. They budgeted but, that amount plus some organizations gave money to that fund. So that's even more so, than that. So I don't, I don't know uh, if she could. <clears throat> Get any money that way, maybe up to five grand. So she should try. That's a great idea. Yeah. I don't know if it's still available. I'm assuming it's still available, but uh, maybe it's available until mm -hmm. uh, when does that end? 2024 or right, 23. What's the what's the deadline to use up all that? I thought it was 25. 25. So okay. Yeah. So. I mean, maybe she could try that avenue. Um, Does it I meet the criteria? agree with you that we need? I think we. Sh I think the way to go uh, in the ordinances with the um, uh, board of assessment appeals. I think probably they should handle this. Not the tax assessor, obviously. I don't think the first select woman should handle it. Um, Tell me why you think board of assessment appeals because it rate because it has to do with the value. It has to it has do with your taxes, right? Being yeah. able to get a, you know a, a kind of subsidy off your taxes, and mm -hmm. I think that there are some who's our fairness chairman? equity issues mm -hmm. for the board of assessment yeah. appeals. I don't know. It's, it's not assessment is on the value of your property only. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's how the taxes are. Figure so I guess there is a tie and it makes sense. I mean, but that board is only configured to estimate real estate value. Mm -hmm. It's not, but it's kind of like an unbiased third party. Other towns have put that in. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you, you, you can, it could be added to their duties. I mean, it's not. Mm. I mean, how many are they going to really have? 
also how frequently do they meet is an issue like that's i i think that ma might be why some towns have the board of selectmen do it just because the regularity okay yeah it seems to me like there should be an appeals committee from the board of finance for something like this like that's you know overviewed by the board of finance for you know just appeals you know, when these that's a good idea yeah a separate because yeah. it affects that's what it affects you know So who should be made up of? Um, you know that there should be just a, a committee supervised by the board board of finance that looks at, you know, cases of hardship and uh, you know, in regard to, you know, taxes in general and uh, state you know, town statutes. Mm -hmm. Unless you want it to be the combined. The co yeah. Unless you want it to be a combined BOF RTM senior yeah, tax, yeah. Well, tax committee, yeah. like this this group, whoever's you know whatever we decide there, that group could be the appeal. Could be that joint committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, you may know more than me about the board of assessment appeals, but it seems like they purposely get people on that who are able to assess real estate. Particular real estate agents. Yes. Okay. I mean, I like that idea better because I feel like the board of finance members will be more fluent in these issues. And then for the RTM members, I like the I, I like the fact that we're a little bit closer to the, to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where we should be. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, but I, I was kind of typing and I didn't quite understand the whole scope of what you were suggesting, Mark. Like, there's a pool of money set aside for COVID hardship, hardship. And maybe this could qualify under that for this woman. There, there is ARPA money, uh, $250,000 was budgeted. They've spent 61,000, only 17 applicants applied for this pool of money. So they have one hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars sitting there. Um, so I don't, I, I, I don't know what the application is. I don't know what how you. Get that money, how you qualify. Um, but I'm just, you know, I was looking at the ARPA funding and. Uh, for other reasons, and I saw that and it kind of struck me. That we have all this money available that. <laughs> really, nobody's using. Yeah. You think it's something Julie DeMarco is running? I think it's probably under that. Um, you know, let me look at the description of it. Oh, I have it somewhere here up. It would be great if she could get some form of assistance because she was really worried about being able to stay in town and that this was vital. This this money was vital to her. She's like counting pennies. Yeah. yeah. And she was used to having it. So for the or Yeah. And is is the asset her real estate or is, is does she have a portfolio that's come down to value? I think they're all stocks. They're stocks. Mm -hmm. I think if she did come after the date and it's proven to be that way, I think it would be hard to allow her to appeal it because so many other people that thought, oh, it's the 15th, maybe I have until the 16th because the 15th is on a Sunday mm -hmm. and didn't come on the 13th, the last day. This would open up a lot of other people who might be saying, I would have come in if I could have come in past the deadline as well. So I think we do have to, in her case, show that she did make an effort before it. Uh, before the end of business day on the 13th. Okay. But isn't the, didn't Ross say something about being 12 or something like that? He said that he wasn't, he, he didn't even acknowledge that she ever contacted the office again. He wasn't uh, aware of that. So, but he said, based on what I had told him in terms of the timing and what she had said to me, that it didn't sound like she could like, have reapplied within the time period. I just want to check on that. Yeah. And you'll talk to her. Yeah, I think it's hard because, you know, for the past several years, we haven't been asking 
these applicants to reapply who are already in on person the right. program. And so for the people who had to come in this year, they were maybe hit worse with a, you know, the stock market, which was doing very well at a certain point and pushed their assets above a certain mark. So um I don't know. With so many people, uh, with so much attrition in the program, I thought that they could maybe be a little bit lenient, you know, because how many we lost like 300 people in one year. That's crazy. Seems like they could be a little, you know, it's like, did all towns stop it on the 13th or did some take it? I wonder to the Some 16th. pushed it out. Some Gave pushed it, it out. Why. Why. People do have it in their mind February 1st to May 15th. If we, Fifteenth on a Sunday. Do I have a day or day? I don't. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, but I understand. Like, if you're if you do this on a yearly basis, it must be quite a deadline looming. Right. Can you can you see what I have on the screen or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's this COVID nineteen recovery fund. It's actually two fifty, not two hundred. But I don't know. Maybe she could try to get some money there. Okay. So yeah, it'd be under probably Julie DeMarco. That is a really good idea. I'll um I will check with Julie DeMarco and have this person contact her too about it. So does everybody agree? Is everybody on the same page about meeting some kind of appeals process yep. or hardship exception? I'm so glad I need it. Yeah. yeah. We're a town, we should act like a town. Yeah, exactly. We have to treat each other like neighbors mm -hmm. because, you know, it, it, you know, things may get very rough and we have to have a way to cohese. Yeah. Be there for each other, for sure. And sometimes interpretation, legal interpretations are a little off. Like, I remember this happens with the previous town attorney with that medical deduction. Okay. Where, do you remember this, Cindy? Like, someone had contacted us and it was... Um, a participant who was on the program as a disabled homeowner. Right. And the rule for calculating the medical deduction had changed once the assessors changed, and it changed the amount that a lot of people, well, you know, there weren't a lot of people who are disabled homeowners on the program, but those, it, it affected all of the, all of the people who are disabled. And because they have so many more medical expenses. Right. And so, it was very upsetting to, to to these applicants, to these participants. They were on the program, mm -hmm. and they reached out to us, um, and we were able to finesse a change before we were able to even do a legislative change. So I think that in the interim, they changed the like calculation back to being a more substantial amount. But we also we fixed it legislatively. I just, I think that it, it was so hit or miss in terms of being able to reach us as a group and um, for us to know that that was happening, that problem. So for to have a group designated, like this is where you take your- Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Has to happen. And I, and I, I think it once again speaks to the need for this joint committee to be formed in my opinion to take that function as well. Okay. I'll have to check with the town attorney to make sure that's possible. I don't know why most towns separate the legislative function from the appeals function. It might be some kind of like. But as you said, like, you know, you can form an RTM committee about anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, if it's a, a you know, a, a, when, if, when we're talking about a joint board of finance or whatever, their deputies, you know, and an and RTM committee. You know, we know that ultimately the reason why it's joint with the board of, board of finance is because they're going to have to approve whatever it is that the recommendation is. That's that's the legality, right, of, of, of the law here. The board of finance has to approve it. So there's nothing wrong with having a joint committee where our team members are speaking on behalf of the public. Mm -hmm. That's true. And it's, it is a different kind of dynamics since the board of finance would be involved. Yeah, it's a, they would have to it's a different it. body than yeah. the legislative body. Yeah. Um so they would have to make the recommendation to approve it. Right. It's under their budget. 
So do you let's talk about the formation of the joint board of finance RTM committee? Yeah, I, more. I spoke to the chairwoman, uh, Lori Charlton, and she was going to put it on the agenda for this past Tuesday for their meeting, but Ross is on vacation. So um, I showed her the new data uh, with all the attrition and she comment, you know, she understood that that it's it's much different than what had been projected um and changes the situation a lot right. so she she's going to have ross present that information to them right. and she's going to propose forming a committee a joint committee which is great because i really do think even if we aren't able to change some of the some of this other substantive stuff at the very least we'll be able to hash out a process and that will just be so important for people moving forward to know, like, so we're not wasting our time. It's good marketing <laughs> for what we're doing. Yeah, just so, you know, I, I just, I feel like oh, we've been spinning our wheels a little bit because, oh, you know, we're not even really sure if some of this work is going to come to fruition. At least that's how, you know, it's difficult, I, I feel like. I've been a little bit um, less all in to doing research and stuff like that because I just don't I don't I don't want what happened to happen again. Where it's discouraging. It's very discouraging. And we haven't had the public here since before COVID. Yeah. So we don't have we don't know the issues at hand either. Yeah. We're working in a vacuum. But this will be good. Well, herb. And Her, yes, and Gordon. Yeah. And uh, Bill. Bill, yeah. So I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen. I think that Ross is back next week and then he'll be going to the Board of Finance and then hopefully they will vote to form that. Uh, our next meeting. I think their next meeting's on the 18th. Okay, so it's before the one that we're supposed to have our regular meeting. So that's good. Because we'll have, I think that it's, it makes sense for us to vote on that as well. Perfect. Great. Um, is there anything else that anyone wanted to share in terms of research? Uh, Gordon was going to look into some research, right, on the deferral program. Can't remember. Yeah. I didn't do any more research on deferral. I think the meeting in June or May, we talked about finding out what the stigma was and why people weren't applying for deferral. Um, and I believe that Gordon had asked and Irv had asked if we or myself would find out more about how the towns are overcoming uh, the stigma of a deferral versus a credit. When the towns, because some towns you have to apply for the credit in order to apply for the deferral. Like you have to apply for both programs. Oh. But um, some it's very separate like ours. So why are all the towns in the area not having a great deal of people in deferral? I and mean, we don't have, we have a handful. And they feel as though that's like in many towns just have a handful. So why is it, you know, to do some more deep, deep dive into that, but I haven't done that. Um, I'm not sure who to speak to about that. I kind of want to get to the assessor, I guess. Yeah, it sort of makes sense when um, people know that it's going to put a lien on their property and it's just different than the credit. Right. And our credit program is just so much more it's free money. It is. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's free money as opposed to money you will have to pay back mm -hmm. with the higher income limits and then only fifty percent. <laughs> it's only fifty percent for it, it makes it, it seems to make a lot. It's only fifty percent reality. Yeah. So whereas yeah, sometimes it's, it, it's it's the qualification thing. It's the lean. It's the age. age. Seventy five. You know, if you change the qualifications, maybe you boost that number. Um, Right, and so we, that's probably the, one of the first recommendations, because we've already said that, that we will make to the joint committee is to lower that age, mm -hmm. right? 
we're the highest stage and the 16 that. towns survey we did were the yeah. highest stage. We were the highest stage. So that is we already have that in minutes that we were all in a unanimous disagreement. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, the only question was the increments, and that of course could be taken up with the board of finance and right. look at the you know the ramifications of dropping it by three years versus five years mm -hmm. or initially, you know, have a timetable of some sort. Mm -hmm. But it, it just to me on a you know, just idea level, it just makes sense for the town to you know, keep assets on the books whenever possible. It'd be in our interest to have the, there be more referrals. I mean, deferrals than a. Yeah, than a. Yeah, there's basically no yeah. revenue loss. Okay, yeah, exactly. So why wouldn't we do that? It seems like we would want to move towards that. Yeah. Especially if we're looking into the future, where there could be quite a lot of people who have their portfolios significantly diminished. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. It, it's, it's probably yeah. asset level age, um, the lean. You know, we've also heard in the past that when a person is no longer with us, they don't want their kids to have to pay the, you know, the money they owe, uh, we've heard that in the past. Um, right, but. So it's, 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 you know, these are a lot of the things I think that uh, are hurting the deferral program. Shifting SAMs require new rules. Yeah, definitely, because we have to kind of recalibrate. Yeah, and we've got all these people who are heading, you know, the war boomers and. You know, we're going to be in these categories where their portfolios are declining and they're going to, you know, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? You know, if we can help them stay in their homes and, you know, support them as a community and, and then, you know, receive, you know, remuneration down the road, it seems like a good deal for everyone. Yeah. So we covered everything on the okay. agenda. <laughs> It's a great timing. Bada bang. Just Thanks. like that, it's over. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? A motion, a motion. to adjourn. Second. Great. Thanks, everyone.